Hi, and welcome to the example for Module 1, Section 8, Part 1, uh, Force of Interest example. So in this example, we have an account A that's crediting interest using a 10% simple discount rate. Account B uses an interest rate of I compounded semi-annually. We're told at the end of two years, the forces of interest in accounts A and B are equal, and we're asked to determine I. Now look, if you're going to be successful on actuarial exams, you're going to have to pay attention to the details within a problem. So uh, let's, let's reread the problem and be play, paying careful attention to the details. Uh, the first sentence, account A credits interest using a 10% simple discount rate. I'm okay with that. Account B uses an interest rate of I compounded semi-annually. I have a little bit of a problem with that because the I... When we see I, we generally reserve I for uh, a periodic effective interest rate. But in this case, the I is being used as a nominal rate compounded semi-annually. Uh, so when it says determine I, we're not asked to determine a, an effective rate. We're asked to determine a nominal rate here. So you got to be careful with that. I'm not trying to be tricky. This is the kind of stuff that they're going to put on actuarial exams. Uh, and so you've got, uh, you've got to pay attention to the details. So what I would do in this problem uh, is, since I recognize that, that they're trying to kind of cross me up here a little bit, the I, I would strike through the I and replace it with an I upper 2. So let's do that. That's the first thing I would do. It's really an I upper 2 that I'm looking for. Okay, so now let's move on to the solution. So for account A, I've got a, a, a simple discount rate of 10%. So D is a point, a point 0.1 simple. Uh, if I know the fact, uh, I can go directly to what the force of interest is when I'm given a simple discount rate. So if D is a simple discount rate, the force of interest is a D divided by 1 minus D times T. If you know that, go straight to it. Plug in a point 0.1 for D, and I get, uh, I get this force of interest at time T. Now what I need is a force of interest at time 2 because the second to last sentence says at the end of two years, that's at time 2, uh, the forces of interest are going to be the same. So I'll plug in a 2 for T, and what I'll get is that the force of interest in account A at time 2 is a point 0.125. Now, you may not remember that. I, 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 I encourage you to know that when you take the FM exam, but you may not remember that. And if that's the case, then what, what you'll have to do is from being given the simple discount rate of 10%, you'll need to go then to the expression for the accumulation function. The accumulation function would be, um, after plugging in a 0.1 for D, it would be the, the reciprocal of 1 minus a 0.1 T. Uh, then you have to recognize, oh, the definition, it's always true that the force of interest is the ratio of the derivative of the accumulation function to the accumulation function. So now I've got to take a derivative of this accumulation function, and you got to know how to do that using, the, again, in here, in this particular problem, you have to use a power rule and a chain rule. Uh, to take that derivative. I actually did a problem like this in the learning video, so if you want to go back to the learning video and see that, uh, you can. And you'll get back to that same fact that I gave you before on a previous slide, that uh, when given simple discount, uh, the force of interest is the simple discount rate D divided by 1 minus D times T. And once again, I'm going to plug in a 2 for, for T, and, and I'm, I'm back to the same result that I had before, namely that for account A, the force of interest at time 2 is uh, 0.125. So now let's move on to account B. Account B, I'm given an I upper 2, so the first thing I'm going to do with that is divide it by 2, get the semi-annual effective interest rate, and I'm going to call that S. So uh, once I have S, then I can get, uh, the, once I have the semi-annual effective interest rate, I can get the accumulation function. A of T would be 1 plus S to the T power. Uh, uh, now, notice that that's exponential. And uh, in the learning video, we learned that if the accumulation function is exponential, then the force of interest at time T will be equal to the natural log of the annual accumulation factor. Uh, even though uh, the the force of, I'm sorry, even though the accumulation function in this problem uh, as a function of t, t is being measured in semi-annual periods, it won't matter. The force of interest is still going to be the natural log of the annual accumulation factor. So I got to build up, build up, you know, the, the material to get to the annual accumulation factor. I've got a semi-annual effective interest rate. So if I take one plus that, that gives me the semi-annual um, 
uh, accumulation factor. And then, of course, the annual accumulation factor, you, uh, you accumulate annually by accumulating um, a semiannual period and then another semiannual period. So the annual accumulation factor will be the semiannual accumulation factor times itself, in this case, 1 plus S squared. So then I plug that back in and I see that the force of interest is going to be the natural log of 1 plus S squared. And then I can use properties of logarithms, bring the two down if I like, and write this as a 2 times the natural log of 1 plus S. So for account B, the force of interest at time T is a 2 times a natural log of 1 plus S. Uh, notice that the right-hand side of that uh, equal sign, the, uh, it, it, it doesn't have any T's in it. So actually, this force of interest is constant with respect to, to T. What I need is the force of interest at time 2. And so I'm going to plug in a 2 for T. Let me change the T to a 2. Yeah, <laughs> let me change uh, T to 2, and I get... 2 times the natural log of 1 plus s. There was no t's in the expression that defined it. It was, it was, it was, it was constant with respect to t. And so now uh, I've got the forces of interest at time 2 for both accounts, and they're supposed to be equal, so I set those equal to each other. And now technically I'm asked to find the value of i upper 2. I've got an equation that has s, but remember s being the semiannual effective interest rate is the i upper 2 divided by 2. So I can rewrite the equation uh, with the unknown being an i upper 2 and now solve for i upper 2. I would solve for this by dividing both sides by 2 and then uh, what exponentiating both sides and then divide uh, and then subtract one from both sides then multiply by two and I'm getting an I upper two of, uh, of the, about a 12.9 percent. Okay so again uh, one of the uh, um, key things with this particular uh, example was you got to pay attention to the details. Look at the problem. When you see a symbol, don't automatically assume that that symbol is, is being used in a way that we normally use that symbol. Read the rest of the problem and make sure, um, you know, make sure that you're not being uh, taken in on, on, a, on a, uh, a problem like this. Okay, uh, so I will see you in the next video.